Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Train Simulator Classic TSC Railworks. Today we're going to be taking a look at the New York Central Hudson's by DSG DDR. This is one of the very first locomotives that he produced and <coughs> probably one of the most famous locomotives in the United States. <laughs> Especially one of the most famous to have not survived but uh, this is one of the locomotives that has been requested of me over and over and over. And while I'm not done quite yet with the Pennsylvania Railroad uh, list of locomotives, I'm kind of over fiddling with the Pennsylvania Railroad for a little bit. So <coughs> I'll finish that off in a week or so, but till then. We got the New York Central Hudson's, the pride of the New York Central's high-speed passenger service locomotives. That is pretty much all these locomotives were ever used for was high-speed passenger services. Now, that's not to say you wouldn't see one on a freight train, but these locomotives were built for speed. Uh, and they were built specifically for fast passenger services, so that's pretty much what they stuck to and they were good at it uh, these locomotives lasted from I believe these first ones rolled out 1927 ish uh, and rolled on until the uh, the end of steam for the New York Central which is in the late uh, I believe in the late 50s 57 58 somewhere around that time uh, unfortunately every single one of them was scrapped uh, save for a single tender. One single tender survives from the New York Central Hudson's. Uh, but the rest are scrapped. But that's not to say these locomotives have not lived on in the hearts of every old man and child out there. Because uh, for most of you that have gotten started or have shown any interest in model trains, the chances are you have seen, have had or have fiddled with or have desired one of these locomotives in part thanks to Lionel uh, no I'm not sponsored by them would be nice but not sponsored uh, but Lionel uh, it's one of those big brands that for many many years this was one of their big main sellers was a New York Central Hudson that was I still is a lot of their starter sets you'll get one of their many variations and colors and whatever of a New York Central Hudson uh, these locomotives have been there from <coughs> their own day one for model railroading and they still are an ever popular model in model railroading uh, they're very popular in pop culture uh, they were popular when they were built they were popular in pop culture thanks to the locomotive we'll be taking a look at in a little while but first we're gonna fiddle with the uh... we're gonna fiddle with the bare bones original uh, so these locomotives are the first of the 464 type as well so they got to uh, name the series uh, they were named after the Hudson River uh... the 464 generally across the board was regulated to high-speed passenger services these locomotives did not perform well on freight services they did not perform well at slow speeds uh, they were equipped with a tender bo or a, a booster on the trailing truck uh, which at the end of their time was one of the primary reasons these locomotives ended up uh, going to the scrapper's torch or getting sidelined by the bigger heavier Niagara's and such as the uh, the boosters and had uh, the boosters had really outlived their time uh, and their mechanical nightmare as one could imagine buried all off up in here but those boosters are pretty much required to get these locomotives up and running from slow speed now at higher speeds they were very efficient very powerful that was the big thing with the 464s it it was to replace the 462s 
but <clears throat> the biggest issue with the 462s is as trains got heavier they could not simply maintain power at high speeds uh, and Lima had thrown around the idea of super powered locomotives introduced with their 284s and such uh, 210s uh, so the idea was to take that super power technology and slap it on a Pacific s frame and so uh, that's the short and sweet story the short and sweet version of the story of how these things came about so it's like having a Berkshire's boiler on a Pacific frame but uh, yeah essentially the New York Central uh, they had done all they could with their Pacifics and they needed something bigger faster and more powerful and the Hudson fits fit that bill quite well just what they were wanting at high speeds these locomotives are extraordinarily powerful they maintain their power very well and they were very well liked but unfortunately none survive and we have a very faithful reproduction here now as I said this is one of his older models so I'm gonna go easy on it but I am gonna I am gonna poke at it because it does show its age in some ways in some ways it absolutely stands out uh, this is a freeware locomotive but there are some things some of you have probably noticed right off the bat one of the things but there are some things on this locomotive that have not aged very well but there are other things that have aged great let's go ahead and get the elephant out of the room the one number one thing that has not aged well on this locomotive is the smoke effects though they're horrible they're really bad they were all right for when this locomotive came out uh, but if you compare this even with his latest uh, with his latest models the Santa Fe model the, uh, the Pennsylvania duplex this just this looks very dated matter of fact I should have stuck one of the I should have stuck the Santa Fe Northern or the duplex over here to uh, kind of compare and contrast how far he's come and these are still nice locomotives and they're free yeah, so you really can't go wrong with free but that's not to say there's not a heavy level of detail now, like I said there are some things that are relatively noticeable the squared off boiler edges are squared off they're not very round uh, obviously the smoke the particle effects are horrendous and the weathering is eh, not my favorite it it doesn't stick to me very well <coughs> I, I, this could be touched up I'm not hating on it I get it if you're looking for a locomotive that looks like it's in service this is going to be dirty this is a glorified pencil lead and oil mixed together uh, graphite paint that's more uh, put it in simple terms it's just pencil lead and oil <laughs> but uh I don't know it's it just doesn't it doesn't look quite right in my opinion our uh, builder plate here uh, built by Alco I believe uh, Alco and Lima both built a fair number of locomotives uh, obviously DSG opted to go for the uh, the American locomotive company version and I think this is one of the reasons that the weathering up here on the smoke box kind of sets me off the rest of the Moco one is really clean overall as you guys can see there's really no no oil no grease stains no no nothing really just the smoke box is dirty so it doesn't doesn't really stick with me but <coughs> as is typical of his high-end quality the detail is still very much there there's still a very good attention to detail without a doubt excellent attention to detail
I haven't fiddled with this locomotive in a while. It used to... It doesn't now, but it used to give me pretty consistent out-of-memory errors. I don't know what I did, but... Now it works fine. Uh, see, look at it. Just, the man takes the time to even do rivets. Even back then, it took the time to do rivets. We get models today that are rivetless. Photoshop rivets. Like, come on, guys. This is a freeware, and this man takes the time to do the rivets. Why can't our payware stuff be like that? Ah, we can get in the firebox. We're toasty. It's so, kind of some neat, neat panels. This walkboard could stand to be retextured. It's it's very blurry, even kind of from a distance back here, maybe. But the walkways, eh? That's another one of those spots that kind of shows its age. I do not have uh, I don't have high uh, high resolution shadows turned on, hence the shadows look kind of wonky. So uh, that's not on the model. That's that's on my end. That's for my computer. I don't. I don't want to murder my frame rates too too bad. So, and for those of you that don't know, shadows are one of the biggest murders of frame rates in TSC. So, I've got my shadows turned down pretty low. But overall, just really really good looking locomotive. Really good looking locomotive. Our little double stack is modeled. I mean, look, even back then, he took the time to model all the valves and such. This is really nice. I, I feel like the rope is a little bit not rope-like. I don't know how to describe it. It looks like a white noodle. A very white noodle. And it stands out very much so, but yeah, not terrible. See, I can, I can get on board with the steam effects. The steam itself actually doesn't look too bad. It's the smoke. The, uh, the smoke is horrid. I'm sorry, dude. I know when you watch this, I don't mean to... Um, I swear, I'm not trying to sound facetious or mean or anything. I just... That is... That's, that's pretty... That's pretty dated. I might be updating this model to this model might see an update I'm sure from him he does actively work on all of this stuff which is awesome in my opinion uh, it wasn't that long ago we saw an update for his E6s and it was awesome I, I did a video on the E6 a while back I didn't get to do a video on his uh, on the previous build of the E6 to be able to kind of show the differences so that's unfortunate but he does actively work on his stuff so we might see an update before too too long hopefully that mess gets remedied but just an awesome attention to detail even this handrail up here shaders are a little or the shadows are a little bit wonky in places so right, right here it almost looks like we got a shadow being projected that way as well as that way but that again like I said that might just be the game being typical <laughs> our tender is very well modeled See, look at this freeware. This is an older model. Look at how nice and crispy that lettering is. Look at that. Look at that. Look at how nice and crispy. That eh, definitely blurs out when you get up on it. <coughs> I will point that out. Uh, it, it does blur out when you get up on it, but look at that. Nice and crispy. And it looks real nice from right here fairly nice from right here it's compared to a bunch of the payware models that we see today where you can very visibly see 
the almost Photoshop squares outlined versus this. This this looks pretty decent for its age. It it really does. It definitely blurs out whenever you get clo uh, get up close to it, which is kind of noticeable. But overall, it it still looks pretty good. Uh, I don't know if he modeled. These do have a mechanical stoker. I don't know if he modeled it though. No, not on this one. Actually, hold up. Let me cheat. It's got a pretty cool sound in the stoker sound. However, the stoker sound comes from right up around here, which is kind of odd considering you know, our fires back here, but no stoker movement, sad days. That's uh, injector sounds. Ah, that's his usual injector sounds, so nothing too fancy there. The coal, the, uh, the stoker sounds are actually pretty good, it's just where it's at, where the sound file is at. Same for our injectors, everything's like right up around this dome right here. I say this is cool. <clears throat> These have a, uh, a water scoop on the tender, which I believe is functional. Look at that, look at this. Chains have a kind of natural hang to them for the most part I think realistically speaking these two uh, chains would kind of stretch out a little bit but I'm nitpicking at that point I'm, I'm definitely nitpicking I'm not gonna be that kind of ass as I overfill our boiler so into the cab get rid of our HUD here both are small and whoo way way overfilled. Cab looks pretty decent. Like I said, it does show its age. This this is one where the cab cab age does show off. However, so we got window sounds. They're making a little clunking whenever they go full direction. Open the windows. We can open our side windows can open our little window here the door same over here same for that little window let's come over here we go over that roof vents there's three of them they're all separate you can open them to wherever you want them <coughs> I don't think the back windows. Nope, back windows don't. Here they are. We got gauge lights, cab light, exterior light. Frame rates plummet. Again, that's pretty much expected if the uh the lights cast any kind of shadow it's pretty much expected they're gonna cause your frame rates to plummet but I got a cab inside or a light inside a light outside and then our gauges are lit which is hard to see where they're there we go their gauges do light it's still hard to see it's very bright outside but we don't need them and then let's see headlight headlight uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. see that's a good looking headlight it's got a nice yellow yellow hue to it it's not obnoxiously bright no weird flares going on that's a good looking headlight. Now it does have a noticeable kind of halo on it, but other than that, that's a good looking headlight. Let's 
skip to the front here. Oh, okay. Yeah, got it. Ah, you got a little bit of a flare going on, but still a great overall great looking headlight. Let's see. <clears throat> what else do we get? <coughs> Just about all of our gauges can be fiddled with. There's our blower. Uh, don't get that one. Compressor. Don't get those. I believe those would be your water gauge. Valves. Sight valves. Uh, injectors, we don't get that one. Let's keep moving over. Water drain, glass, we don't get. We get that one. Water gauge, turret, dynamo, don't get that one. Don't get that one. Don't get those. Water gauge, water drain, stokers, uh, which you can fiddle with, micromanage. All of these are functional. Uh, no, that is feed water, stoker, bypass, smoke consumer. I have no idea what that is. Uh, blower again. That's kind of interesting. A blower on both sides. Firebox. Uh, fire looks like it's something a bit dated. This looks better. That looks better than the actual fire. I'm not, not gonna lie. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. Our pedal for the firebox doors. That's pretty cool. It's functional. Oh, uh, we got cylinder cocks, whistle steam valve, bell. Suppressor we don't get, independent brakes, throttle, sander, don't get that one, sander booster, bell, bell steam valve. Interesting, that's cool. I haven't fiddled with this model in quite some time. Should be our booster power. Boom. Alright engaging of the booster our brakes Not running our reverser it's got a it's got a rotating handle which is kind of entertaining for American locomotives a bit weird we get a nice everything else yeah I believe that's it I believe we covered everything we can fiddle with in here. So let's go over our bell. Now the cord doesn't move. It's a little bit sad, but uh, the bell does rotate. This is typical bell sound, which is pretty decent. And of course our whistle. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty decent sounding whistle. And you really can't hear any loop or anything in it. The volume's pretty nice. I like it. This is... Pretty typical chuff sounds, so uh, there's nothing, nothing wild and fancy there. It's got some interesting rolling sounds. Now we start to get up to 
Number two. Which we'll go ahead and hop across to now. Yes. So, you get two locomotives in this freeware pack. If I could get out of the habit of... See, the, the view buttons for trains and the view buttons for train simulator are very different, but... Anyway, you get two locomotives with the pack. You get the already infamous, unshrouded, normal, everyday Hudson. And then you get the Dreyfus Hudson, the streamlined Hudson, the one that you've probably seen in just about every train book ever made in the United States about trains in general. If it's not a road specific train book, chances are it's got pictures of this thing. Uh, <clears throat> the New York Central picked out a handful of uh, handful of their Hudsons and had a relatively famous art designer design the uh, the shrouding. I don't his name fails to uh, fails to come to mind, but uh, uh, these these locomotives were made pretty famous worldwide. Uh, one of the most famous being the 20th Century Limited train that one of these was built up for. Now, uh, smaller small details changed over the years. Uh, truth be told, no two shrouded Hudson was the same. Some got skull and disc drivers. Some got a different paint job. So. I don't know exactly which one this locomotive has been to model. I'm not that well versed on the New York Central, but it goes nice on just about any of the uh, the Northeast Corridor routes with a a set of streamliners by it. I unfortunately couldn't figure out. I thought I had. There are some New York Central uh, repaints for uh, g tracks lightweight passenger cars that go along real nicely with this locomotive. And I believe DSG has also done repaints for the New York Central of uh, the cars that come with the uh, California Zephyr set. So there are cars available for this locomotive, but... It's a really cool looking locomotive. This was the thing. The all right, This was the style back in the 30s and 40s. This was the the way of the future right here. And so this was really an icon across the New York Central. One of the things I forgot to look at. It does. The throttle does play outside. That's cool. Real decent looking herald here. It's an absolute icon of a locomotive. Tender got shrouded as well. As you can see. Underneath all of this. Is this right here. <laughs> Even the uh, the rear end of the tender here, it's got a little bit of a kind of a shroud going around it. It's just too cool. Overall, it really is just a neat looking locomotive. Even with the really narrow coal bunker opening, which is unusual even for the streamliners. Extremely well detailed. We get all up under here. We can kind of, kind of see the leftover Hudson underneath. So let's set our track up and take it down the line. 
Now, sound-wise, both models use the same sound. Uh, both models use the same cab. So, nothing real fancy outside of that. Like I said, minor details here and there change. Uh, everything you do inside the cab does translate outside the cab for the most part. So, that includes our windows here. Same for this model. As you can see, our little uh, side window swung out. Our windows are open. Stuff like that. Just about everything translates outside. But, uh, matter of fact, I believe even that little bitty window does. Yep, a little bitty window opens. That's cool. I don't know why I do this. I can't run with a HUD anymore. It just feels wrong. Versus Shanders. Now, where the bell is hidden on this locomotive, I have no honest clue. I don't know. I know the sound comes from right about here. For the bell, it comes right about there, right where the whistle is. You can indeed spin your drivers. Steam uh, intensity increases for our cylinder cocks as you open a throttle, which is pretty cool. Ah, uh, short whistle does cut off a little bit there. Yeah, the short whistle kind of cuts off a little bit, but it's not too heartbreaking. Now, uh, this thing picks up and runs. And it does it real quick with, uh, with a pretty decent load behind it, but it definitely picks up and runs. Let's see, what's there? Sure. Four way most of the way. Yeah. Such a good looking locomotive. It looks like it just walks. I mean, we're doing thirty eight miles an hour. This looks like it just kinda just kinda walking along. Out for a little stroll. Now I know these locomotives can run, run pretty regular around 90 mile an hour, which uh, is not too hard to do in this locomotive. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to get it up to 90 today, but you know we'll see. The white gauge is our speedometer, which is kind of interesting. Another red mark off around 85-ish. I'm pretty sure you can get this locomotive past 80. If I remember right, I've, I'm pretty sure I've definitely had this locomotive running along at 100, which is not entirely unbelievable. Let's open it up. Let it go.
I forgot to look and see if our uh, it sure is. J Bar does move outside. That's cool. cruising along with some Amtrak cars here which is uh, slightly unbelievable but it's what I had already loaded into the scenario so kind of a what if what if one of these had managed to survive into preservation would it boogie along with some Amtrak cars who knows There's 60. Love watching the motion. Love watching it. Real neat to watch. Something I totally forgot to look and see. Oh, we don't get to drop the water scoop. Darn. Yeah, this thing picks up and runs pretty good. Ah, uh, sound kind of cuts out a little bit quick there for my taste. It doesn't have that gradual. There's not a gradual build up or uh, cut down of the steam pressure in our uh, in our chest. So it just immediately cuts in, cuts out, which, uh, it's not terrible. It's not unplayable. I, I would absolutely say Smokebox has kind of spoiled us a little bit with, uh, functions like that. But it is something noticeable whenever you run the pro line, steam locomotives, whenever you come over or something like that. And it reacts like that. It is a noticeable thing but like I said this model came out a good while ago now so let's go ahead and grab some brakes brake sounds don't sound half bad it doesn't just lock up either which is pretty nice it doesn't just come to an immediate halt see if we can lock our wheels up though just for giggles and squiggles actually you know what it's great full service darn they don't lock up ah oh, well speaking of which Who do you have sand that pops out? All six drivers. That's cool. Oh yeah. Even with our brakes set to full service, full emergency, it does still take a pretty good bit for this locomotive to slow down from 70, so that's nice. The smoke does start to do some real wonky things. I don't know why. It's always done some wonky things for as long as I've had this model. It's not something that I've too terribly noticed because normally I run this model from inside the cab or with head out the window so I don't really see the smoke doing the wonky things unless I go into third person view like I did a second ago and we saw that kind of waterfall going on. So, But there it is fellas, the New York Central 464 Hudson Class by DSG VDR. This is as I as is all of his stuff freeware, and as is all of his stuff, it is an absolutely awesome pack that is 100% worth having. 
it's freeware guys you you can't go wrong with freeware especially at this quality even this old like i said this is an older model this has been around for a while now and it's still it still puts to shame some of the stuff that we are seeing pushed out as paid dlc from dovetail games and other unmentionables is it perfect no it shows its age and i think i nitpicked it well enough to i think i nitpicked it fair enough it, it shows its age without a doubt but it still stands up pretty well on its own and it goes good on routes like this we're on the uh the hudson river line and uh it fits in pretty well. We've got a bunch of New York setting routes that this locomotive would fit in quite well. Either or. Either one of the locomotives. If you don't like the streamlining, which I, I kind of agree with, I personally, I'm not too fond of the streamlining. You get the nice unstreamlined version and run it all day long. Now, what if, what if one had survived? So, do go check it out. As always, link in the description. Awesome looking model. Go check it out. And I will see you guys next time.